Hello and welcome back to Ready Steady DIY. If it's your first time here, thank you for joining us. If you've already subscribed, thank you for subscribing. If you like this video, please click the thumbs up button. Well, today I wanna to talk about cleaning the front and rear elements of lenses. It seems like these days more and more people are becoming photographers and videographers. You need photographs for your Instagram page, for your YouTube channel. Everybody's figuring out the ins and outs of cinematography and photography and trying to make it work for themselves. I think that's great. One of the things about that that I think people get anxious about is cleaning a lens. Cleaning the front element or rear element of a lens seems a little bit dangerous, doesn't it? You spend your whole time trying not to touch it. <laughs> and then it gets dirty, you have to touch it. I think a lot of people find that intimidating. Today I wanna to go over how I clean lenses. I've been doing it for over 20 years. I've cleaned some really high value lenses. When I was a camera assistant, I used to do it almost daily. I've done it basically the same way ever since the 90s, and I'm gonna show you how I do it today. So let's get going. <laughs> So I learned how to do this, I guess, first in the 90s, taking the camera assistant course taught by uh, IATSE, which is a camera union. And then after that, because there was no YouTube at the time, you couldn't just go online and learn something. I had to learn by going from rental house to rental house, making friends with lens technicians. Usually you bribe them with a case of beer or some homemade cookies, something like that. And so uh, that helped me refine my technique. And these days I basically do the same thing every time. It's not that complicated. It doesn't have to be frightening. It's actually very straightforward. First and foremost, if you don't have to clean your lens, don't clean your lens. <laughs> that might seem like common sense, but actually a lot of people clean lenses in advance of important shoots. My kid's graduating tomorrow. My friend is getting married. I'm excited to try my new lens out. That kind of thing people prepare for and they feel like they have to clean a lens that's already clean just to make sure. Generally speaking, if you don't have to touch the front or rear element of any lens, don't. Inspect the lens, make sure it's clean. You know, if it's an important shoot, you wanna make sure of that. But if it's clean, don't clean it again. <laughs> There's no preemptive cleaning required. The way you check a lens, take a large light source, like a window, put it opposite the lens. So the lens is between your eyes and the light source, and the light source is skipping off or reflecting off the surface of the lens. And then just roll that reflection around in the glass You'll see if there's dirt or fingerprints or anything like that. If you identify something there, then you have to move on to the next step, which is touchless cleaning. The first step is to use air to try to clean it off without touching the surface of the lens. Some people prefer to use canned air. I'm not a big fan. I've seen the little straws on the aerosol cans fly right off. <laughs> if you get it in the wrong orientation, sometimes propellant can come out. I'm just not a big fan of canned air. I much prefer to use the little hurricane puffers. Sometimes people call them rocket blowers. They come in different shapes and sizes. As long as you get a large enough one, just by squeezing it, you'll create enough of a concentrated airflow that you'll be able to get off an awful lot of debris from the front of a lens without a ton of effort. And the great thing about it is because it fills with air from the room, the air you're blowing across the surface of the lens is the same temperature as the air in the room. It's also the same moisture content as the air in the room. Artificial air in the can, not so much, right? So I prefer to use these little puffer things. So generally speaking, when I'm using one, particularly if I've had it for a while, I'll give it a puff away from the lens, not in the direction of the lens, just to make sure that if something somehow ended up inside of this that I'm blowing it out and blowing it away. And once I'm confident that it's blowing clean air, then I'll turn it towards the lens and I'll hit the front or rear element of that lens with air from the puffer. The orientation of the lens in this process is pretty important because you wanna have gravity be your friend. The puffer is going to disturb any loose debris that's on the element of the lens you're trying to clean. But if you have that lens facing the ceiling or the sky, if you're outside, basically like a big table, you could end up disturbing that debris and instead of having it come off the surface of the lens, it could just resettle back onto the surface of the lens and stay there because you're not using gravity to its fullest potential. A better idea is to turn the lens upside down or at least on its side. If the lens is light enough, turning it upside down doesn't feel weird or like you might drop it. That's probably the best orientation for it to be in. That way, when you hit it with the puffer from below and you disturb any debris that's on the front element or rear element of that lens, gravity will grab that once it's off the face of the lens and pull it down away from the lens. That's sort of what you want. With heavier lenses, you might put it on its side or put it on a table or a camera cart or whatever you got and skim across the surface of it. At least that way, gravity is sort of helping you too. But it's a good idea not to face that element straight up so you're not creating a little dust shelf. 
Let's say you've used your little hurricane blower, your little puffer, and you've blown and blown and blown and you just can't get this piece of debris off or there's a thumbprint that the blower is not affecting, something like that. At this point, you gotta go to touching the lens. And for me, there's only one way to do that. There are people who will recommend using a chamois or a microfiber cloth, brushes. I don't use anything at this stage of cleaning that can be reused at all. I'm not a fan of lens pens, brushes. I don't care what the fabric is. I'm not a fan of anything that doesn't get used and disposed of immediately. I realize it's not environmentally friendly, but there's a fair bit at stake here. It's too hard to clean some of those things. Some of them work wonderfully the first time, the first 10 times, maybe even the first 25 times. But eventually, because you're using them to clean something, they get dirty. And then cleaning them becomes a real chore. There's a lot of ways that that can go sideways on you. So I prefer to just forego all of the tools that can be reused and only go with disposable tools. The things that I use to clean the front element of a lens when touching the lens is a requirement are these. I use Pancro Lens Cleaner and Kim Wipes, and I've done this for over 20 years. Kim Wipes are made by a company called Kimberly Clark. They're basically like fancy tissue that are designed to clean scientific tools. They do a great job cleaning the front and rear elements of lenses. They're resistant to leaving behind debris. They're really great. They typically come in boxes like this and they are 4.4 inches by 8.4 inches. I mean, they do actually come larger, but the kind that a camera assistant would use on a film set would be the 4.4 by 8.4 size. And that size is just a lot easier to port around with you. And then as far as fluid goes, the film industry standard is Pancro Lens Cleaner. I've been using that since the very beginning. It has never let me down and I don't see a reason to change. It comes in an excellent little bottle with a cap, doesn't leak. It dispenses a perfect amount every time you hit the plunger on the top and it doesn't leave streaks. It's an excellent tool for cleaning the front of a lens. So basically I use these two things in combination quite a lot. First thing I'll do, I'll take the Kim Wipe dispenser, whatever it is, whether it's the original box or some other device that I've migrated some Kim wipes into. And the very first one, the top one, I will throw away. <laughs> I won't use that at all because it's been sticking out of the box. It's been in a case somewhere. Who knows what landed on it, what got into it, what ground itself into it. In the end, it could be dirty and there's no reason to use that. They're not expensive. The landfill implications are pretty minor. So I just throw the first one away. And then I grab the second one and I fold it in half and then I fold it in half again. The reason I do that is because I find this size to be the perfect size to wrap around around my finger and keep flat. I'm not a fan, I've seen people do this where they sort of scrunch it up like a Kleenex and then you get all these sort of weird angles and edges and folds. I just think you're cleaning a flat surface, you should use a flat surface. Once you've done this once or twice, you get pretty good at making sure it's not sliding off. You don't want your finger sliding out from behind the Kim wipe and then touching the lens. By folding it and folding it again, you're increasing the thickness of the Kim wipe. So when you wet it, the chance that it will rip and your finger will burst through is greatly diminished. And like I say, you can keep it flat. So you're cleaning the flat surface with another flat surface. To me, that just makes the most sense. And then I give it a little spritz with the Pancro. You hit the Kim wipe, you don't spray the lens. And then once it's damp, I slowly move it towards the lens and just start in the middle and create little circular patterns, getting wider and wider, moving out towards the outer edge of the lens. And then when I'm done, I stop. And then I inspect. Did I get the mark? Did I not? Does it need a little more? Generally speaking, if it needs a little more, I don't push harder, I just do it longer. And eventually, once I'm done and I'm pretty satisfied that the lens element is clean the way I want it to be, I'll grab my little hurricane puffer again and give the lens just a quick safety puff just in case the Kim wipe left behind some kind of debris. It's a good idea to give it a little hit with your puffer and make sure that any lint or any dust that's left behind from the cleaning process gets blown away. And then you're done, except wait, you're not. <laughs> the next conundrum is the cap. This is something many people overlook. A lens cap is typically made of some kind of ABS plastic, and that plastic is going to be statically charged, especially in a dry environment like a Canadian winter indoors. That lens cap is gonna draw dust to it like a magnet. So you wanna make sure to use the same cleaning process on the inside of the lens cap that you do on the front element of the lens. 
Because otherwise, let's say you're cleaning the front element and then you put the front cap back on, all that dust on the inside of the cap is just gonna hop onto the front element of the lens. There was no point in cleaning it in the first place. So make sure the inside of your lens cap is clean. Just give it a little wipe on the inside, give it a little puff, make sure there's nothing there. Cap the lens. Process for the rear element, exactly the same as the front element. And then you're done. Incidentally, the same process can be used if you've got an iPhone you've gotta clean or a DSLR lens. And they all work the same way to me. So there you have it. I hope that helped you out. If it did, please feel free to like or subscribe. Liking and subscribing really helps out a channel. And if you could do that, I'd really appreciate it. And also please feel free to leave a comment in the comment section below. I wanna hear about your lens cleaning experiences. If you've got questions, please feel free to leave those down there. And otherwise, take care, stay safe, have fun with your DIY projects, especially the photography ones. <laughs> and I'll see you next Saturday.